So today I'm going to be taking a look at this piece and it's going to be one of those episodes where I am just throwing all of what I have to on a on a painting and just seeing what comes out. And um, also I corrected some of the bigger issues um, um, with my sound. I'm not 100% sure if they're fixed uh, because as I'm talking right now OBS is telling me I'm hitting red. And the only reason I dimmed my voice over the years so much, or lowered the voice, is because people complained about my voice sounding really shrill and really high and not good um, for a while, so then I brought the volume back down. Um, I am so sorry about all of the volume control you guys have had to do with my videos. I'm, I'm so sorry. I've, I've been trying to just find the, the, the good middle, good medium. But, um, but I hope it sounds better now. Um, to start off, let's do some quick announcements. So, Istabrak, how do I submit my stuff for you to critique it? All of the stuff that I look at isn't my art, by the way, everybody. Um, it's other people's art. <laughs> so when I show before and afters on my Instagram and you guys say, wow, good job, uh, that looks good. It's not my art. It's, um, it's someone else's art. I critique other people's art. Go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here. It'll take you to... Um, uh, the subreddit was that's where everything happens so this is where you can submit your work to get critiqued this is where we uh, announce challenges once they're up um, towards the end of this week into next week I will be talking about the upcoming Halloween challenge it'll be really fun it'll be like spooky portraits um, something around there something that focuses on portraits again or illustration um, a couple years back we did the harvest goddess which was so cool um, I don't know why we didn't do it this year. It's just been a really, really rough year um, and a very tiring month. I've been very, very sick. Um, I've had a flu for like a month and I'm not sure why. So I, um, it's not COVID. And um, <clears throat> I've just been very sick, but I will make it up to you. We'll come back with a thunder at our feet for the Halloween challenge and into the holidays challenges. Um, but uh, but the Halloween challenge, I'll upload it soon somehow, some sometime between now and the first. So you guys will have a good month to illustrate them. Um, but yeah, go here to get your stuff critiqued. And then Portrait Studio, which you'll see me use today along with all the brushes you see me use. I really only use my brushes in my videos. Um, not because I'm like here trying to um, only sell my brushes, but because I really love my brushes. <laughs> they're like fucking perfect for me anyway. But if you're interested in seeing what they're like, they're available also on sale on my store. Um, and Portrait Studio is on sale. So let's get to it. Let's get into the fun of it all. So this painting has been in my queue for a while for the critique queue, um, and I've just always been kind of pushing it back a little bit. So I'm going to talk about a couple of the things we have here, a couple of the issues. Um, so it looks good, but it obviously looks unfinished. It doesn't look finished. Um, and one of the reasons why it doesn't look finished, one of the bigger reasons, is that the texture is incomplete. It's unclear what's happening in the image. Um, and the portrait, there's no focal point. The focal point is as rendered as everything else. But before I start rendering the face, I need to fix the, the, the tilt. Um, I need to add, just add character to it. And that's the, nothing's wrong with the tilt. She seems very fun. But it still seems like a noob uh, balance to the, you know what I mean? And uh, please, don't assume I'm being, um, uh, like, you know, I'm trying to antagonize anybody by saying the word noob. But there's just this beauty in the word noob. And I just say it with so much love in my heart when I say it about you guys. Because you guys are so cute and you make noob mistakes and I love talking about them. Um, <clears throat> but when I say noob, just say it's just, I just assume that I'm saying it amorously, you know, enamored, with, with an enamoredness to it, okay? So the noobness of it is that she, her head is just perfectly level with everything, you know? So you've got just like that, that's it. That's pretty noob, it looks pretty noobish, right? It looks pretty and noobish. And you've got the shoulders, and you've got the head, and it just, it just looks like, look at how noob that looks, just stiff. Right, that's the word is that it's stiff. Um, so how do we unstiffen this? So we have to unstiffen it on the stick on the <laughs> at, at the stick sketch stage. 
right here when it's just still just a, a little x-ray of, of what's going to be. So how do we make an x-ray sketch just like this, just a simple sketch like that look fluid? How do we make it look fun even just on the sketch stage? So what you could do is you could experiment a little bit with where the symmetry line is. So we've kind of tilted the head back just like that. So we've tilted the head back and over. So now she's kind of a curious steampunk matriarch elf character. She's kind of not, she's not just stiff staring straight with a, with a perfectly um, level with the camera through quarter view. It's through quarter view that's tilted up and away. So to demonstrate that, I've opened up my handy dandy portrait studio. And um, so basically right now, She's got this long neck. She's got this really, um, uh, you know, level shoulder. So let me just actually leave, I'll leave it alone. So what I'm doing is instead of this, I'm going to be doing this. So she seems a little bit more um, like strong now. There's a strength to her. As soon as that chin goes up, that's elite status. That's some kind of mm, wisdom to her. All of a sudden we're acting with the neckline. And then you're going to take a look at uh, what happens when the eyes still do the thing that they're doing here, which is they, they're still going to look in this general direction. So the head looking this way but the eyes looking this way it's beautiful combination when the head looks in a different direction than the eyes it creates an unintentional kind of crossover and um and uh and, and it just it, it's, it's good for the focal point so play around write this back to me play around with different eye and head directions don't make everything look in the same direction all the time and this artist already did that which is one of the things that i prop them for is that um uh, I really like how they made the eyes look down this way. Love it. Love her personality, which is why I was just so um, interested in critiquing this piece. <clears throat> so I want to do that. I want to tilt her head up. Once that head is tilted up, we'll see a little bit more personality come through. So bear with me while I figure this out. First, we'll start with a big signature here, and then we'll move into the nose, the eyes. And um, then the mouth. And then I'm going to just toss that bar part of the three quarter view all the way back there. And um, I'm going to keep her smile, keep the majority of her character. So the last critique I did, I did a major overhaul change. Um, which I, I enjoy doing, but uh, I'm not a big fan of losing what the original artist intended. So I like to preserve some of the, you know, the, the, your story. Just a critique hour is about showing you how you could have told your story better. Um, it's not about like deleting your story and replacing it with my stupid story. So I love this character and I really want to work with her. So I'm kind of just tilting her head up. And it's going to be a combination of, um, let me see if I even did anything decent. So I really like her before as well, that head tilt down. Um, but let's just add some kind of motion in her neck so it just doesn't have that, uh, that stiffness, that new stiffness to it. Because even though it looked cute before, we want to know that the changes we made, we've, we've capitalized on all the possibilities. All right, so I'm just bringing that back here. Need to make sure I'm not losing your character's personality either. So my table's back to its squeakiness, um, so uh, I am sorry about that. All right, so I'm gonna just sever the head real quick. And um, just trying to further expand that that head tilt down kind of like a curious head tilt away All right. and it's just added an element ele ele uh, sorry element of motion um, to everything All right so ele 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 <laughs> 
and then I'm going to um, just raise them up there just like so so she seems like she's a ghost kind of like the Harry Potter ghosts do you know what I mean um, so uh, but you know she's a wise character um, so once I've done that now we can get back and move away from uh, from just that simple uh, equally rendered equally muddy uh, focal point and start adding all of that focal point um, focus on it but before I do um, I want to talk about the different ways you could create the same effect with the character so a head that's tilted down so lately I've just been binging on Harry Potter um, and there's something that the different Dumbledores do differently. So Dumbledore is very wise and he knows your answer. He knows you're, you know, you're hiding something from him, like in uh, the, the, the Chamber of Secrets, how Harry was being mirrored with uh, Voldemort, Tom Riddle, when he was young and he was withholding information from Dumbledore and he knew. Um, so Dumbledore would be like, is there anything you're not telling me? And then the actor would tilt his head while looking up. So he looked wise, but very curious, but still very intimidating. As much as wise, intimidating, and curious it is to, to, to tilt your head like that. Um, as much as it could be. So it's about mostly some of the time, like you have a lot of options with, with creating that. But sometimes, you know, stuff like this, tilting the head slightly a little bit while tilting down can also make you look wise and curious and a little bit dangerous as well um, this looks a little bit playful um, this looks a little bit carefree dangerous I wouldn't say wise but definitely a little bit unhinged which is again why we mess around with the tilt of the head when we talk about characters who are a little more crazy because we're showing how their head is not really screwed on right like a light bulb just falling off to the side there's a lot you could do so mess around with the head because the neck is just this crazy flexible thing it's not the head that moves it's the neck joint so it's this crazy beautiful system um, that has so much flexibility to it and there's all kinds you can do and you guys just hover in this this realm sometimes you tilt the you tilt the head a little bit but you guys are just so scared of tilting things in two ways three-dimensionally so this is not just an axis tilt on the X Y this is an axis tilt on the Z so we've thrown the head backward and now we're seeing the bottom of the nose so if you're having issues and you have for just open it up and open portrait studio up and just take a look at what's now visible now that we've tilted the head that way um, and then this one is a lot easier because you guys don't have to worry about the nose you guys are so scared of the nose the most courageous thing you guys do is just a three-quarter view um, uh, and at one point or another in your career as a as an artist you're gonna have to bite the bullet and just make a you know a choice to add more perspective in your work um, so um, uh, uh, stop with this stiff newbie kind of three-quarter view level with the camera at all times no matter what it's just kind of silly because it's it's just so stiff and so basic and we've seen it a thousand times before so a simple head tilt like this today even though the character might not have needed it because she still looked wise I still applied it to the critique because um, it's great for the character to have and it's good to, as a demonstration because this is a tutorial class after all it's, it's good to have um, uh, a more motion of some kind of perspective some kind of organic motion that shows the characters fluid they're real they're acting they're loose they're they feel real they're not stiff to the definition you predefine for them um so i am going to continue just pushing things along so she looks old but i'm not sure if she's old so i'm gonna have to make a creative choice because i don't know if this is just your brushwork but she looks old but that's why I'm not completely raising her eyes up to show her when she was young. I'm kind of just letting the eyes sag a little bit the way they do when we age. And I love the smile. I don't want to lose it. And I'm just going to raise that eyebrow up because she's fun. She's the fun aunt. She's basically going to be me. <laughs> me, I'm, that's who I'm going to be, the fun aunt, the childless fun aunt. <laughs> um, and um, uh, she's like all wise and she has a as you know a, a, a blimp or she flies something for sure like a plane um 
but she's very wise, so we want to raise that eyebrow, but we don't want to raise it up this way because she's not being sentimental. She's just being wise, so we can still keep that eyebrow low. And the lower that eyebrow goes, the more stern. Um, she can still seem wise, but she also seems like she's up to something now. Eyebrows are crazy powerhouses of expression and storytelling and portraiture. Um, I was telling my student before this class, uh, look up how to act with your eyebrows. Um, videos online on YouTube, tutorials, how to act with eyebrows. Take a look at how much power is in the eyebrows. Um, and start taking advantage of that for your work. So I'm going to also let the eyes stay a little bit sleepy because she's not she's she's not necessarily vulnerable. She's just strong. She's safe in her strength. She's not necessarily vulnerable in that we're closing her eyes or she is um, she just feels safe. She's very she's very wise and she has a lot of power and that power comes with a sense of safety. All right, so now I'm just gonna just to start rendering. Um, so the most important things to get down when you're trying to create a focal point is um, just the dark spots of the face. Make sure you have those down. Um, let me just zoom out here. Getting the nostrils where I need them, making sure they're in perspective. And I'm just using my number two um, a blocking brush. It's an oil brush because it has a bit of paint but also a bit of texture to it as well. And um, I'm going to make sure we have some eyelids, but I also don't want to completely lose um, the eyelids, the shadow there. <coughs> what about the disparity in the size of the eyes? Um, what do you mean? What does that mean? Based on an entire movie, on that Wally based an entire movie. Um, on that principle, yeah, the, the expressions. I know, I loved Wally. -E. It's one of those movies that's so good, just like um, Up, you can't just watch it, I know, more than once. <laughs> For me, movies like that, I've watched like one time, two times, and that's it. Um, very true, we only, uh, Wally -E only had uh, sockets, no nose, no mouth. Yeah, so they combine the eyes and the eyebrows into one thing. And, uh, and we just, we, all the acting has, has comes in through that. So I'm just um, going to be making a lot of creative choices here. So I'm going to give her some eyelids because she's looking down those eyelids on underneath, have a crinkle to them, uh, but the eyes at the top don't, uh, the eyelids at the top because they're stretched downward. And... Um, And I'm just bringing in information, bringing in detail. Uh, don't want to make her very old. So see, this is a very aging line. It's just something in between. Just a realistic application of dark circle. She's not yet an old lady. Um, she's definitely 30, 40, something like that. Uh, pretty wise, but not old. So not 60s, not retired, anything like that. She might even have, you know, the intention might have been young lady, um, but you know, we'll see. I don't know what the artist says. I'm not even sure if they're present in class today. All right, and then I'm just um, not blending yet. All I'm doing is just, just fucking piling on that, that those that those edges. I am just not leaving any stone unturned. Everything gets an edge, even if it doesn't need it. Anything that I could get my hands on to create more reed um, is getting more edges. And that's because when you apply the smudge brush later, you'll be left with the appropriate amount of edges where you needed them. This is just rendering. All I'm doing is rendering. By the way, love the black background. Love that slight green haze. I'm just going to exaggerate it later for you. Um, love a lot of what you've picked here. And I'm applying an edge in between the lips, making sure I have that cylindrical indication there. <clears throat> Pretty much just sketched out the lips on top of each other, really. Um, not doing anything else. Maybe you wanted, you were confused about wanting to keep her ghostly, but not sure how to um, 
you know, make it look like a clean edge. Paint, if you have some kind of effect later, a ghost effect, a smudge effect, a blur effect, render the whole portrait as you need. Render the whole freaking portrait. And then after, now that I tilted her head back, we really don't get a lot of her ears anymore. Maybe if they curl forward, we'd get this one here. So paint the whole thing and then later worry about all those effects. You can literally, it's, it's just change the layer effect on, on Photoshop to get that blur or that glow that you need. There's no reason why you need to, with digital access to media, that, uh, to di access to digital media, there's no reason why you need to worry about applying transparency effects or painting in transparency effects. Um, you have a digital tool at your disposal that can just do that for you without losing any of those critical edges, any of that critical time spent uh, sculpting. Just sculpt, worry about that and then the rest falls into place. For the eyes, I am gonna just bring in a little bit of detail. Don't want her to look like a insidious villain, but I still want her to have some kind of detail the way a ghost would have detail, you know, to the level of that. Not, we're not so much transparency, just showing that there's a humanity in her eyes and then going full black for the pupils in the iris. And the lash line. They're really important for the detail there. All right, I'm just applying more edges, more edges in between the wrinkles, um, smoothing out some of those brush strokes you did that don't seem really strong. Um, they kind of just seem forced uh, blotches of paint that you were hoping would result in a render. Um, it doesn't work like that. You have to be uh, pretty deliberate with your blocking. You can't just toss in values anywhere you want and hope that it adds up to something that looks... I mean, it would. It would. You know what I mean? Like if you throw a bunch of paint and then eventually you'll get to a face. But we're, we're here trying to answer that question, why does my art suck? How do I make it suck less? Um, so if you want your art to suck less, be more deliberate with your blocking. Just hear the gasps from people listening. Suck. I can't believe the teacher used the word suck. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, so what was that question? Um, vanilla. The eye furthest from us looks much smaller than the one closest to us, but like in an unnatural way. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm correcting that now. So what I do is I, I just think about the lines and how they match up um, and make sure that everything is matching up equally. All right, so just applying value wherever I can, applying edges wherever I can um, and going from there. Alrighty, and then just rendering really pretty much, just um, figuring out how I want some of these components to look. <clears throat> just making sure the hair makes more sense. So getting my soft brush and making the hair feel like it has volume. Again, who cares that it's a ghost, if it's even a ghost. Maybe it's not a ghost, it's just a character surrounded by some kind of green mechanical machine evil, you know, glow or something. Um, but until then, until the painting is done, then we'll apply the, the effects. Um, and then these little goggles here are just a little bit too bright. Maybe one of them could be bright based off a nearby light, but I'm just going to lower them for now. And then I will start blending around the eyes, blending the patches around the skin. So that if you're painting a portrait and you're trying to apply style, even while applying a painterly style, in general, at the end of the day, when all the tallies are counted, you still have 
a less textured face compared to everything else because the rule of thumb is that the face, it's, it's a soft thing. If you look at a human's face, apart from features, skin is very soft. So when you guys throw in all this patchy work everywhere when you're trying to do quote unquote painterly, which you have no business doing because you're too much of a beginner to try that stuff, um, it ends up looking like just bad blending. It doesn't read as painterly. It doesn't read as that. So what I'm doing is I'm blending away all the edges I don't need, all the patches that you left behind, and I'm trying to clean up the face proper. Wherever there is face, there is going to be smudging, and then I'm trying to uh, preserve some of these edges as well here. So the neck over, the chin over the neck is one of the most fundamental edges to keep intact, but this quote-unquote painterly thing you got going on, you, you canceled, you sacrificed that edge. Like for what? You didn't even get anything out of that sacrifice. Um, so just keep things intact. Respect the edges that are vital. Respect the textures that are vital to the read. Skin needs to be soft. Edges need to be clean. These are the rules of rendering. Um, provide more edges than you need so that you could just blend away till you get what you need. Um, that's how you get that complete polished finish. Oh, I wasn't going for a polished finish. Yes, you were, and you will be hitherto until you're ready to start breaking rules with fundamentals, fundamental rules, rules of physics um, to appease, you know, the desire to move away from, from the repetition of fundamentals. And that only happens when you've done enough that you're, that you're ready for, for painterly work. So <clears throat> as far as this artist's concerned, you really need to work on perfecting your blending. You need to be only focused on that. Work on what it is, what an edge is, and what it is when you blend away at an edge. What is the anatomy of blending? What is that? When you look at the physics anatomy, not just like a human anatomy, just the anatomy of the edges and their relationship with each other. What is it that goes into that? This goggle is out of place, um, so I'm going to tilt it, uh, shrink it, or compress it, tilt it, and tuck it back there behind the bangs. Because it should be behind them. I'm going to connect those two. And um, some of the eyebrow is lost now because of the um, because of the bangs, so I'm gonna, I want that expression back, but a lot of that expression is already um, visible, but I want it back. Um, and I'm just gonna get soft brush now to bring in those beauty signatures around the eyes, just that delicate um, amount of makeup around the eyes, just to show that she's a little bit more of a rule breaker. Smoky eyes used a lot on rule breaker characters, just think Harley Quinn or stuff like that. Um, even now I'm not talking about the unfortunate um, live action casting. I'm talking about um, which is okay casting, I guess. But um, I'm talking about uh, you know even the cartoons. Remember, think about which characters get the dark circles. I feel like this character would have a mole next to her lip. I agree. Um, and then we've got the lips and the art and the way after I've and applied those initial edges and the sketch edges um, The way to the render is just to preserve the edges you need which is the overlap of the lips and then apply the cylindrical impression of the geometric anatomy from the light so meaning that the top of the lip of either lip gets light and the bottom of either lip gets shadow so this entire lip gets shadow and that's how you kind of and she seems like a poshy you know transatlantic accent she seems like she talks like this yeah it's like like Amelia Earhart <laughs> um I'm gonna get on my blimp and I'm gonna go to uh to Korea to Tibet yeah she'd totally go to Tibet <laughs> um but she also seems like a kind lady so she's not a snob and then I'm going to really quickly apply, nope, that's too much, that's too perky. I wanna just apply a really simple radial shading here. Again, not trying to make her look like a Windsor snob, I'm trying to just make her look like a proud 
woman in her field. Um, Amelia Earhart, basically. <clears throat> Get on the dirigible. Get on the dirigible. <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> Stupid. Um, and then I'm going to grab some of the green, just this atmospheric green here, and shift it over into blue a little bit, and just use it on all the parts that are kind of looking away from the light, just to help. And then a little bit here, just on the edges of the face. And then of course that specular light that we don't want to lose. And then we want to get back some of the skin of the neck so that we could show that there was that head lifting, that head lift. So that we can actually see the neck, because then there's no point in all this stuff. We don't see the neck a little bit. Um, <coughs> Catherine Hepburn, yeah, I agree. You're into goblin moms now. <laughs> and um, and then I'm just going to clean up some more edges. I want to keep that chin proud and prominent. And there's, there's a lot we could do. Um, so in order to get rid of some of that poshiness, I'm going to just lower this lip and raise that eyebrow just a little bit as if the eyebrow raised with the um and then just give her a real smile again i'm making a lot of creative taking a lot of creative liberty here so because i don't know what the artist initially intended is she you know, is she a villain? Is she whatever? But I won't turn her into one. Don't worry, as much as I'm tempted. <laughs> and um, I want to move the eyes a little bit more that way, as if she's just revealed to the protagonist that you know their mode of travel. So you know that like moment in movies when the protagonist is like, "How the hell are we gonna get over all the way over there?" <laughs> the 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 um. The, uh, the supporting actor character goes, um, we're going to use that thing. And then they're like, what? <laughs> it's always some kind of crazy contraption um, to get somewhere and do something. Um, and this is that moment where she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're using that, that cycle-powered blimp mobile scuba thing. <laughs> use the Nautilus. They're obviously going to use the Nautilus. The Nautilus. All right, and then I'm going to blend a little bit more around here. A little bit more here. And she's still looking very tricky, but it's not evil. Um, a little bit more of a dark spot right there. Just to envelop kind of that corner a little bit with some with some fun and then matching the two cheekbones together. I always struggle with the jawline, especially the chin and irritation, but I don't know why. Um, do some studies on it. That's just what the best way to get rid of some of that um, confusion there. And then uh, and then do some trace over diagrams, also a really great way. Um, so I'm just going to start taking care of these surrounding objects. Um, here and there. And then, uh, well, first, what I'm going to do is just clean up around it real quick, just like that. And then I'm going to select inverse, and then just bring in the color there for the for the color. 
British students are cringing across the UK. Um, and then I'm going to clean up a little bit here, a little bit there. You know how it is. You know the drill. You can't do an accent without the, the, the slang of the time. That's the rule. So I don't know enough, enough slang of the time. And then I'm going to uh, just continue kind of adding that iridescence, that just general brightness over everything. Uh, just because she seems to be a ghostly character with a ghost grain used on her. Um, I'm gonna blend a little bit more. And um, just uh, applying some, some stuff here and there. Blending out the edges of the nose now that I know 100% everything else has been cleaned up. And blending out the nostril so it feels a little bit more organic instead of just stapled on. You sound like Emma Thompson with the British accent. Oh God, I can't stand her. I feel bad because like, what if she secretly watches my critique hour, and then you just hear like the teacher that you <laughs> says, "I can't, I can't stand her. I can't." Um, does she have? She does have that old mom vibe. Yeah. And um, not sure how much of this edge I want to make sharp, but I know the nose needs to be much sharper. So it's one of those edges that results in the rendering. So nose overlap edge is critical. Write that back. Write that back to me. It's critical because it's literally an object in front of another object. There's no reason why they should blend or collide in any way apart from, you know, the edge defining them. And, um... And then a little bit more edge work here. And I kind of made her younger in the process. So I'm not very happy with that. So the way to kind of make her look like a wise old lady, but not so old, is to just bring down the corners. And, um,. So the lips are a little bit more full than an old lady's would be, so an older lady, so I'm just going to thin them out. And um, I just don't want her to have Instagram lips. It's just like a trend of our time, unfortunately. One of these days, a bunch of, like far into the future, it's no, no longer going to be a trend, and there's just going to be a bunch of old people in old folks' homes with gigantic lips. <laughs> I mean, it is filler, so you have to like refill it. But um, I'm like, no. But what if like some of those are surgical? It's like, oh yeah, they're from the two thousands. They they really went hard with the <laughs> with the whole lip thing. Um, another thing I want to do is think about the makeup of the time. So you know, the steampunk era, which had a lot of lipstick, a lot of that stuff. Um, so saggy filler lip. Oh lord. Listen, listen, you guys, since, you know, all this is going to go down in history, if I ever get to the point where I'm in an old folks home, fucking kill me. <laughs> all right. If I ever get older than her, if I ever get older than wise and young and still kind of sexy, if I ever, ever get like a day older than that, just fucking just <laughs> straight to the guillotine, just send me to the other side. I do. I never want to be, you know, and not, nothing wrong with that, you know, for those who are, but I just, I don't. That's not for me. I old age is not for me. One of these days, I'm just gonna surprise all of you and just die. <laughs> all right, and then um, a little bit of a lash overlap, and um, completing some of these areas here. And I want to take a look at the before just to see if I'm moving in the right direction. But before I do, 
Um, I want to tilt the head up just a little bit more. Just so, again, this is just about showing how you could take it a little bit further. And uh, apply that joint motion to the, uh, to the portrait. So a slight tilt in the head and a little bit more rendering happening everywhere. And then finally, we can start adding those ghostly elements. Finally, diagonally. <laughs> she seems like she'd be the type who says diagonally. Diagonally. And then I'm going to blur out some of these areas here. And then continue. Creating that texture, you know, detail relief, detail relief idea, which is not to over saturate the illustration with the same size brush stippling throughout. Write that back to me. Do not repeat the same size brush the entire illustration corner to corner. Do not get the same size brush with the same type brush and just keep stippling and slightly decreasing size because that is the number one way to kill your illustration. It is just the worst thing you could do because it is not real texture. It is not anything. It's nothing. It's just impressionist art without really knowing what impressionism is. Um, it's, it's just bad paint. It's just bad painting. Um, don't do that. And I want to just um, elongate her neck a little bit just to show that pride. And I'm going to tuck out her chest just to show a little bit more pride, just to see how she's very, um, very confident in her dirigible or whatever it's called. So now I'm going to do a bit of color correction. Actually, one moment. And I'm going to tilt the nose up just a little bit more for that perspective. And then tucking in the far part of the head just to apply that perspective shift. Um, don't want to lose too much. That's enough for now. <clears throat> Come on, Claire, Clarice. What's her name? Clarice. We can't really say Clarice because it's been taken. Um, what's her name? What is her name? Hmm. Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to get that brush here. All right, then. I'm going to lower opacity. And I'm going to brush it with no color mode or anything like that over everything. Because that, and only around the edge really, but that's what's gonna create that ghostly effect. And a little bit on the face. And I want to check the before without showing you guys just for the surprise. But I'm gonna strengthen her chin by outlining her mouth a little bit better. And then give that Cupid's bow a bit more definition. And um, kinda wanna make her eyes looking in a different direction. But c'est la vie, I'm just gonna go with what I have. And I also kind of tempted, sort of, to move the neck. A little. 
Yeah, something about moving it helped. Mostly just the um, the joint. So now you have the same character really with the same idea. So remember, we could have still tilted the head down and, and achieved something out of that, but we still have this really, really nice, fun um, uh, character who's really interesting, but we have that, you know, that, that, that added level of, of, of characterization in the acting in the neck and the neckline. So now what I want to do is just toss the, throw a bunch of stuff at it. So I want to throw some more contrast. I want to throw, um, some color correction just so we could complete the piece so things feel a little bit more even. I want to shift things towards that eerie green just a little bit because you've got like a warm sunlight green here which is not a good idea. You want to just stick to that one temperature in the green which is that ghostly bluish turquoisey green. Um, and then the thing with having the dark background is that it's she, we're using it to make her glow a little bit. So um, she seems to not really be doing that. So I'm going to just try some tricks here and there just to bring some of that out. Maybe the edge of her character has that, that aura in certain areas. I'm still not crazy happy with what's happening with the character. And the ears are in the completely wrong spot, so let me just correct that. Um, so we have a little bit of, a, of that and that. And then I'll just clean it up real quick. And then I'll show you the before and after. So adding more characterization, using less of those boring um, still uh, poses for your characters and actually trying to act through your characters. So be better actors. Um, look up you know, different uh, uh, tutorials on all of that. Become more acquainted with really what it means to create a convincing uh, emotion in your illustrations or a convincing personality. And being good at accents also helps quite a bit. So sometimes like once one of the lenses just glows while the other is just kind of still. So you could do something like that. While the other is black sometimes or partially black. Um, but the thing is she's not um, open, you know, out in space, like in an open light. She's, op she's not opaque. She's like a ghostly character. So what I'm trying to do is find a balance throughout. I'm just looking at the navigator and seeing where everything is. And really when it comes to making a character look transparent, it's just subsurface scattering. So you just have to show that there's a solid point to them and it's somewhere in the center, but the outsides are all um, transparent. And I'm just throwing that over her face as well and then darkening the center around here. Just a lot of rendering and a lot of um, a lot of perspective changes. Mostly everything else is intact. And then because I messed with the contrast a little bit, I'll go back and try to relieve some. We did lose some of her age, which comes from really two main sources. The uh, 
the, the laugh line which expands as you get older. It's a wrinkle and it just turns into a full ridge. The sunken in che the cheekbone just here, which you have to do in both sides. So you just sink in, sink in the cheekbone from one side and sink it in from the other side, making it jut out a little bit. And then, um, and then the dark circle, which you apply. So she looks just a little bit older now. Uh, the nose also loses that um, cutesy look, kind of just gets a more pronounced bridge. And sometimes it hooks. But we can't really see the hook too much. A full hook in the nose looks like, look, looks like something like that. Um, so we're just doing a little bit. And then there is like the sag in the eyes. Um, that if you wanted to show a little bit more age, you could. And I'm going to just borrow some of it. It's not that I wanted to give her like a Herculean chin or anything. just the perspective. So you could see um, before we added the age for after we added just a touch more age. And then one thing I want to do is just darken the scene one more time. <clears throat> and go back since all of her is glowing we can't do that so we go back to before we darkened and then just brighten really what is the most important which I would say is the aura so you see how it really works when we leave the aura bright and a little bit of the face just like the like that Hollywood part of the face um eyes feel a little bit distant from each other so I'm gonna just adjust that. Oops. Don't want them to be too different from each other. But yeah, they were a bit off. And cleaning that up, son of a image I got keyboard shortcuts flip canvas horizontal done <laughs> is that it yeah and yes I'm just smudging out some stuff here and there but yes it was very far very very far and um Smudging out some more. And these lines here, these lines should be in the, and this is why I know that you're just, you were just throwing brushes anywhere. These lines interrupted the grain of the texture. They weren't really showing anything about the folds that made sense. They were just going in the opposite direction of the folds. Um, so make sure you don't do that. And then um, I'm just trying to subsurface some of this stuff. I feel like you could do a little bit more with her costume. Um, but, uh, but this isn't about costumes today. And I'm just going to continue pushing as safely as possible, as cautiously as I can, the, that glow, that ghostly glow. Okay, so um, a, a little bit of edging here, just so I could create a believable little thing in between. And then other things you could be doing, I want to do them after the, um, the before and after, but let me see if I could do them now. Actually, I should do them before, but basically what it'll be is let me show you the before and after and apply them. They're, they're going to be like, not really matrix, but it's going to be like a ghostly um, upward blur, this motion blur of something 
or other that that just that just blurs upward. Oh, actually, let me just see if I could do it now. So I'm just copy pasting some areas: filter, blur, um, motion blur, vertically. Oh, come on, you son of a bitch! And then just um, just kind of letting it do that. And I feel like that adds to that ghostly drop, you know, that feeling like things are a little bit more eerie around this magical character. It adds, it adds an element of space behind her, which I think is nice. Anywho, anyways, um, I think I'll add one more little layer of Gaussian blur, but everywhere, not just in one place. And what that will do is we'll redirect the attention back at her. So it's just a, a blur that really sits on the lower half of the canvas. Um, it's all about creating that focal point. I want to do more with her face, but really it was just about rendering it and making it work. So before, so you see that texture everywhere? Let me paste the after after so yes very different very rendered but we added that perspective shift it feels like the same character but do you see what i mean by that stiff shoulder setup um and i like what she's doing it really it really does feel like the, I, I felt you know the character come through but it wasn't enough um and then tilting that perspective backward really made her feel a little bit more um, and enlarging the collarbone does make her look a little bit vampiric but she also has these really uh, elf like ears so I'm not worried about that um, and then uh, if you wanted to you could carry that collar all the way up to her neck uh, but you might want to do some yeah you definitely want to adjust the collar that I did because it no longer looks um, it no longer looks like World War one type of thing you know what I'm saying? We kind of lost it, but you 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 fix that in yours. <clears throat> a framing around the lower half of the canvas, I wouldn't worry about that at all. And one thing I'm tempted to do is just throw a transparency layer behind. It just makes her look more ghostly. You see that the it just makes her look more transparent. Um, but that's up to you. Again, that's just what you're gonna do. So see that halo, the color correction. Her hair still reads as purple, but it's under a film of green, which is the light environment. Um, and then the perspective shift is just what I showed you on Portrait Studio. It's just the difference between uh, that and then what I just did that. Control Z, Abu, we really need Control Z. I need Control Z. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> Anyways, um, and uh, I just rendered the eyes based off what I was saying. But I really like the shape of her mouth from before, so I'm just gonna show you how to, to how to get that back, which is just tuck that in, pull that out, do that, and you just get the same shape in the mouth. Um, so I didn't I didn't want to lose that. Um, so you see, uh, before, oh, son of a bitch. Uh, did I just, seriously? Oh, I just lost my microphone. <laughs> it's okay, I can do it again. It's the right color, down. Um, yeah, I'm already messing it up. A strong cupid's bow, and just tucking that in like that looks more like her face so before looks more modern after and then I'm just trying to copy the same mouth they had um, and if you feel like the lip is too green now you have a filtered color that can get you back that lipstick color that you want which actually is really nice because it ties things in together really cool color choices though all in all so before after before any questions? Her inner sweater could work being brown through gener though generic. I actually got chills. Oh, thank you. Um, the difference is so massive it looks very characteristic and real. 
Thank you. So you guys watched everything. You watched all the major changes. The first thing I did was an acting change, which changed the personality. It added more volume to the to what we were looking at as a person. And then, um, then uh, uh, what's RTX on? Why are you writing that in caps? Oh. Um, and then the second change was just rendering. Um, the, the, the Just adding more information. Getting rid of those little painterly brush strokes because look how dirty they are and if you don't know how to paint hair stop drop and do a hair texture study um you're using the same size brush here as you're using here as you're using here as you're using here it looks dirty it does not look painterly um how should i think about rendering ghost transparency render the whole thing and then lower the opacity make sure you color wash and color wash on normal so that things look washed out and kind of them um, um, uh, equally less less in the contrast basically with green. Um, oh, like you turned the graphics on. Oh, okay. All right, it's a joke. It's like a render in games. You put it on the games because clearer or better. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> My bad. Um, and uh, let me see if I have any more questions. I want to grow up and be as wise as you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Samuel. Um, I've just, I feel because ISTA is self-taught, she uses better words to explain everything. Then I just repeated technical terms that other teachers fail to explain. Um, yeah, like speaking to each other. Prudence, chastity, good faith. Bro, like how do you know exactly what I'm talking about? She is so totally prudence, chastity, good faith, bro. Like, that's so good. <laughs> I just, like, just tied my arms. Like, I just, um, what is it called? Cross my arms right now because I'm just so shook by that name. That's perfect. Prudence, chastity, good faith. But, but her friends call her Marge. Marge, obedience, temperance, <laughs> sex won't. <laughs> oh, man. You're so good, bro. You're so good. <laughs> <clears throat> she reminds me of that new character on Don't Starve Together. It's like a render guy. Anyway, thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate it. So if you are interested in buying Portrait Studio, it is available on at half off at the moment on my store. That's this beautiful software that made life so much easier for me to teach as well as to paint today. Um, it is in the in progress. It is it's just a two-man team that worked on this. So um, you know, you don't have to, it, I, I know there's flaws and they're being corrected, including control Z. Control Z is on the way, I promise you. Um, but it's a work in progress. We've already done like four or five updates so far and it's, it's definitely supported. Um, and I know that a lot of you have questions about control Z. It's coming, I promise you, but it's currently on sale and, um, it's on sale on my store. It's an amazing tool. You get uh, uh, models, you get busts, you get figures that are fully uh, customizable, you get control over the lighting, you don't have to wait for it to bake, um, and, uh, and you get control over the camera. Uh, and we get really nice, easy to use tools here. You can get shortcuts. There's a lot of stuff um, available in the, um, in the video tutorial attached to it on the website. Um, thank you everyone for coming. I will see you guys on Thursday, hopefully, if I feel better, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and look out for the Halloween challenge. It is upcoming very, very soon. Um, and I'm not sure if there's anything else I need to, if you learned something today, I would really appreciate if you hopped over to Patreon, if you feel like doing a whole checkout, getting your card out thing. Um, all I ask for, for all of this educational material for today's before and after, all I ask for is $1 a month. Um, and that's, if everybody joins, it's, it's actually a substantial amount. It's a lot, but that's why it's, it's such a small amount because together it actually creates a really, really strong, highly backed community. That's, it's a long lasting number. It's not a number that you opt out of, you know, it's just a dollar. Uh, it's $12 a year for all this educational content. So everyone here who learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hopped over to Patreon and joined as a dollar it would mean the world. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye guys.